Wendy, music teacher, examiner, author and founder of Wendy's Music. Now I'm here again to talk to you about whether you have access to an instrument as part of the decision making process you're going through in choosing which instrument to learn. So if you have access to an instrument at home, obviously that's a cheaper option. You may have a piano in the house or somebody in the house might have a guitar um, and if you've got access to those instruments and you're interested in those instruments and they suit your persona and your age then that might be a good reason to start learning with that instrument first. However, if you don't have that set up then there are various other options to consider. So you might wish to for example, hire an instrument um, or you could come across the, a hire to buy sort of plan with some companies and essentially a straight out hire which can prove quite expensive might be a good option for the more expensive instruments such as saxophones. Uh, you'd be spending thousands of dollars potentially to buy yourself a saxophone to start off with whereas you might be able to hire one for something like $60 or $80 a month or $20 a week or whatever it is. And some companies that do hire will also allow you to buy the instrument out after a specific time. So that can actually be a really good option as a bit of a, a cash flow assistance. So that's the hiring and hire to buy option. Another option that a lot of people use or like to try and use these days is to buy second hand. Now that's fine if you know uh, where the instruments come from. It's a bit like buying a car. You know, you don't want to go out and just buy a car off any random person uh, because it could be an absolute dud. You might find that you know, there's no motor inside it or something crazy. And it can be the same with buying an instrument second hand. You could find there are a bits uh, like guitars, they, they don't have the tuning pegs on them uh, or you can't tune them because the neck is bent. There's, there's lots of things about instruments that can be broken and aren't always obvious to see. So you want to be careful when you're buying second hand, it's that buyer beware mentality you need to have. Um, if you can get some help from somebody who knows about the instrument before you actually put your money down and you can check the instrument over, then that's not so bad because you can be more confident that you're getting something that's actually um, going to be workable. And it can be a good way of getting a better quality instrument by buying it second hand rather than brand new. So although you do have to be careful, it might be a really good option. Also, of course, depends on the instrument and the availability and whether you've got access to see it, it's local, all those sorts of things. Uh, payment plans are also a good option. Some music stores will have payment plans. Uh, they used to call them laybys, where you can pay them off gradually. That's difficult unless you can actually take the instrument home and start playing on it. If you have to wait, that's a bit tricky, particularly if it's a child who wants to learn and they're being told, no, you've got to wait three months for us to pay it off before you can take it home. So that can be good if you can take it home with you to start with. So you can shop around with a payment plan idea. Another idea is to buy an instrument from a supermarket or a chain store and you'll find that there are a number of large stores that have these super cheap instruments. A lot of people think, yeah, look, it's so cheap, it won't matter if he doesn't stick at it, or it doesn't matter if he breaks it, you know. That's the type of thing that people come up with when they buy a cheap instrument. But it's like buying a car from a bookstore. <laughs> Why would you buy a car from a bookstore? The bookstore people aren't going to help you or be able to help you normally uh, with the support and help of setting up your car as it needs to be. So it's the same with a supermarket chain selling a musical instrument. 
They probably don't know what it is they're selling, what needs to be done to have it set up to start with. And being a cheap instrument, you'll probably find it either doesn't tune well, like a cheap guitar, cheap violins, or it doesn't last very long and it makes it really hard to play. And if it's hard to play, it'll be frustrating and you won't want to keep playing. So I'd be very, very mindful and very careful about buying an instrument from a supermarket chain or a department store chain where they don't have you know, specialty uh, staff to actually be able to help you choosing the instrument, the right instrument, right size, all that type of thing. Um, now, another way of getting your hands on an instrument that sometimes is available and you don't think of is by checking with friends and family if they have an instrument that's not being used. So perhaps it's a guitar or a keyboard, sometimes even something like a violin or a saxophone, and it's been uh, put in a cupboard for a while, and until you mention that you're looking for one, they don't even remember they've got one. So feel free to you know, ask some of your close friends and family, but if they do have one that you can borrow and it is the right size for the, the, the right persona, for the right age group and all of those things, then just make sure that you have some clear guidelines on what will happen if um, there's some damage done or you know it gets broken or which could be just because of its age. It mightn't be your fault. Um, who's going to pay for the strings, the reeds, those sorts of things. Just make it all clear and above board so it doesn't start a family feud or anything like that. And the other last point that I'd like to make about getting access to an instrument, whether it's from family and friends or a, a chain store or whether you can uh, get a second hand one or you hire one or whatever it is, just be very aware that the better the quality of the instrument, then the easier it will probably be to play and the better the quality of the sound. And the impact of those things is that it makes it much nicer to play, not only because it's easier, but because it will sound nicer as well. And particularly with something like a violin, if a violin doesn't sound good because of the instrument, when you first start playing it, it's going to be quite painful. Uh, so the better the quality that you can afford, the better the sound and the easier to play and therefore the more likely you are to be able to play things that you like quicker and the more enjoyable. So it's all sort of associated. The very, very cheap instruments are usually not worthwhile because they won't last and they will be hard to play and you'll eventually have to upgrade anyway. So hopefully that bit of advice on obtaining an instrument, getting access is helpful and don't forget to like and share this video so others can also get some help in choosing their instrument, getting their instrument and also don't forget our free trial offer for our Learn to Play series. That's all for now. Bye for now.